Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 7th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Took a look back today at exploit attempts that we have seen targeting GeoServer. I wrote about GeoServer a little bit over a year ago, but since then there has been a significant new SQL injection vulnerability back about a month ago. Actually, we see very few exploit attempts against this particular SQL injection vulnerability. It doesn't even show up in the top 10. One thing that was sort of interesting about these scans against GeoServer was the role that some of these research groups are playing that try to actually enumerate vulnerable servers. One of them is Shadow Server. Shadow Server does notify ISPs that participate in their program of vulnerable uh, systems. They also have some public dashboards showing how many vulnerable servers uh, they find. And it's pretty consistent around 6,000 uh, vulnerable servers that they're seeing each day in their scans. The other group that's scanning for GeoServer is Internet Census. That's a company that's associated with a bit site they again for their customers are looking for vulnerable exposed servers overall i think it's actually good that on most days all of the scans that we are seeing can be attributed to researchers like this there were a few spikes of others also scanning for this vulnerability and as i said most of them are either just fingerprinting hey is this geo server or they're then also looking for some of the older vulnerabilities I'll probably have to fire up again an actual vulnerable instance in order to see what kind of exploit attempts we are seeing against an actual instance. And CrowdStrike published what they're calling their root cause analysis, which is basically a more detailed summary of what exactly happened when with these updates that caused the major outage a couple of weeks ago. Also, they do outline some of the additional quality control steps that they're going to take moving forward in order to prevent this from happening again. In particular, they will actually now allow users to select a delayed deployment of uh, these signatures. That's, of course, a little bit of a difficult decision here. The reason they publish uh, these signatures relatively quickly is that they're actually attempting to detect currently ongoing attacks. So by delaying this, you're basically rolling the dice here. What's more likely me going to get attacked by one of these new techniques or is it more likely for CrowdStrike to have a repeat of the bad signature issue, which of course is now less likely given the additional uh, quality control steps uh, that they added. As part of the root cause analysis, they also state that the issue that led to this outage was not exploitable for a remote code execution vulnerability. I mentioned, I think it was yesterday actually, some work that was published that claimed the opposite. I can't make the decision uh, who is right, who is wrong here. Definitely, you know, keep your software updated. I think uh, that's the, the safe solution here either way. And users of Kibana should be updating if one of users has access to the machine learning and alerting connector feature. They're able to execute arbitrary code via a prototype pollution vulnerability. Kibana, if you're not familiar with, is a tool to create dashboards in front of Elastic Search. Yes, uh, these sites are often exposed uh, to the public, but I'm not sure how often uh, these machine learning and alerting con connectors are actually then available, so it may require some form of authentication. And Google released its monthly update for Android. It does fix a number of different vulnerabilities as usual, depending on the exact uh, phone and such you're using. That varies a little bit, but one of the kernel vulnerabilities is already being exploited. It's rated high. It is a privilege escalation vulnerability. And if you're using ubiquity devices, uh, double check that there are 
up to date. Checkpoint has done a survey of uh, ubiquitous devices and there was a vulnerability that uh, was patched two years ago. It's a denial of service amplification vulnerability that exploits port 10001 and 7004 on affected devices. It's a UDP vulnerability, so your device has to be exposed, but apparently there are still 20,000 devices that are not patched. In my experience, it's not really that difficult to get Ubiquiti devices to reliably auto-update. It's definitely something that you should consider. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. Trying to lately do a little bit more sort of other things than vulnerabilities. Let me know if uh, that works out, if that's sort of uh, something you like. Uh, Anyway, that's it for today and talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.